Perfect. All right. So welcome, everybody. My name is Kelly, the plant-based kitchenista, if you haven't met me. So we do these classes about every two weeks, except for the holidays. And it looks like February is probably going to be that way because I work for a hospital and we have a large uh, electronic medical record system go live in end of February, March. So we we'll probably have to put two classes back to back in February, but we'll still have two classes, which is always good. Working on those recipes right now. So I'll probably get those posted here over the next week or so. So watch for those. Um, we are plant-based, so we cook, we don't cook with anything with oil. So you'll notice that when I'm sauteing, that it's no oil. It's all either um, vegetable broth or stock, water, or white wine. So we are going to do mushroom bourguignon, which is a really great recipe. And this is one of those ones that you can put all kinds of great vegetables in it. So you can, you know, if you love mushrooms, great. But if you want to add, you know, like some eggplant and some other things in it and some squash, you could completely do that. I'll talk a little bit about the pearl onions that I'm using and the fast, easy way to use pearl onions and to get those peeled because nothing worse than sitting there trying to peel off little uh, the skins off the onions. So easy way to do that. And then we're going to do these apple crisp baked apples, which are, it's like, it's like basically apple pie in an apple, which is really nice. So really fresh. One of Jerry's, probably one of Jerry's favorites because it doesn't, it doesn't like you don't have all the, the crust and all those things. You just have all the goodies, which is the sauteed apples and the, and the crumb, the crumb toppings and, and just the, the plain apple. Beautiful for if you make them for like a, the holidays or something, most everybody loves them. And if you've got kids, peep, the kids love to make these. We usually make them over the holidays too. And, and we have a granddaughter that absolutely loves to make them with us because they're fun just to, you know, pile everything in there and then put them in the oven and have them come out and be all good. So that's what we're going to do. So before I get started, we're actually going to have Jerry introduce himself really quick and we will get making the dishes. Hi, everybody. I'm Jerry Casales. If you don't know who I am, I'm a plant based nutritionist uh, and also a certified instructor for Dr. Manuel Start Solution. And I have a private practice. I do uh, meal planning, uh, addressing new health issues, whatever it may be. And I do free 30 minute consultations. If you're interested, you know, adjustments to your diet or anything like that, I'd be glad to answer any questions for you. Just the information is in the chat window about Kelly and I's website. And, uh, uh, with, and our phone numbers and everything. So yeah, I'm just here to do the camera and eat food. Um, eat food. Eat food. Eat food. Eat food. Eat food. Let me grab the dog. Hey. But anyway, um, yeah, any questions, you know, put them in the chat and I'll be glad to answer them for you. Um, so yeah, and then other than that, I want to wish everybody happy holidays and be safe. And I uh, hope everybody does well. Thank you. I like it. Jennifer Sharp, it says new iPhone. Nice. That's <laughs> what it says on the, the, the thing on the bottom. So that's cute. I like that. All right. So you'll see chat. And so if you're not used to using Zoom and stuff, chat is at the very bottom and you'll see a little chat icon. And if you don't see it, just kind of put the screen just a little bit towards the bottom and you'll see it pop up. So feel free to ask any questions. Um, usually Jerry will to try to keep it open. And if it gets a little noisy and stuff, we'll definitely shut it down. But ask any kind of questions you want. This is all about, as I talk about community. And making sure that we share information, recipes, you know, we're all home, we've got, you know, we're out a little bit more but with Omicron and everything else, it looks like we're going to be home a lot longer. Um, so definitely looking at recipes and fun things and stuff to do over the holidays. So let's get with the mushroom bourguignon. All right, so we are going to start. So I will get some vegetable broth. Like I said, vegetable broth, vegetable stock, water. We always talk about vegetable broth burns off really quick. So one of the things that if you want to do, just add when you're trying to saute and do 20 other things, which usually most of us are these days, just add a little bit of water. So if it says like a, like a half a cup of vegetable broth, add like a quarter cup of vegetable broth and then a quarter cup of water. And it actually will stay a lot longer in your pan and not burn off as quick. So that's a handy little tip and trick. And you'll find I'm full of, I'm full of them. Our journey will say I'm full of it. Yeah. Um, yes. But that I like to give tips and tricks of making life easier. So mushrooms favorite mushrooms whatever you want if you can't find them and you can just get the button mushrooms it's okay it doesn't matter you can do um the shiitake kamini these are baby portobellos so we had a lot of these in the store so i just sliced them up nice and thin and all ready to go and you could actually if you wanted to if you wanted more chunky then you could just do like quarters of them but i did slices add those in them all in there and then 
pearl onions. So pearl onions, little tiny little onions you see all over all over the store, especially now that you know the holidays are happening. And so they always have a little peeling, just like a regular onion. So the easiest way to peel these, instead, like I said, instead of taking your fingernails and having to pe peel each one of these off, is just to take. You just put them in boiling water. Um, so you, what you do is you just take the whole bunch with the skins on, throw them in a, a pot of boiling water for about two minutes at the most, maybe one and a half, two minutes, depending on how fast your water's boiling, and then rinse them off in cold water. And then what you can do is you'll see that it has this, this little pointed edge and then it has a little flat edge. If you cut off the flat edge there, then pretty much you just take it and it just, and you just squeeze it out. And so the skin comes right off. And then if you want, you can always cut this little pointed edge off and then you've got your little pearl onion. That's the easy way to do your pearl onions. Makes it so much easy. So I'm gonna dump those in. And for like, so basically one cup, it's usually about, because the pearl onions usually come in like these long bags or they come in these little, the little plastic uh, containers. If it's a little plastic containers, it's pretty much a whole plastic container. But don't peel them by hand by like that. Just use them really quick and put them in boiling water and then you can get things going. So if your vegetable broth starts kind of burning off a little bit, then feel free to add some more, but be careful, don't add a lot because your mushrooms are full of moisture. And so you're gonna see that your mushrooms are gonna let off a lot of moisture and you wanna make sure that you kind of get through that process first before you start adding a lot more broth or stock or something like that. So looking good already. The mushrooms and the pearl onions. So let those kind of saute a little bit. And then, and sorry, if someone's, I, I kind of skip around a little bit. I'm going to get the crumb topping for the apple crisp apples. So I am going to bring this over here a little bit closer. So I got my handy dandy bowl. And then we've got, we've got all purpose flour. So half a cup. You can use whole wheat. You can use any, any of the flowers that you would like. And then we've got rolled oats. Make sure that you use rolled oats. Don't use the, um, the quick oats. The reason why is the quick oats will be when you put the crumb topping on top of your apple, it gets, it'll get so hard. It'll almost be, I mean, if you like it, great, but it'll be so hard. It's almost like eating like, um, like candy oats because they just, they just kind of soak up all the moisture and get really hard. So that's why you want to use the rolled oats. And then we've got light brown sugar. If you don't want to use light brown sugar, monk fruit could do, date paste could do. And so I kept the plastic on it so I didn't have to worry about getting one big chunk. And then we've got cinnamon, which is going to add your great flavor. Just give a quick stir. And the last is the apple juice. So if you don't have apple juice, water. That'll work just fine. What you're trying to do is you're getting the moisture because you want this to mix into a, a nice mix that actually sticks together. So I'll just give it a quick stir. If you wanted to, another thing you could do because it's always really good in apple pies is nutmeg. So if you have some fresh nutmeg, that could be really good. But this crumb topping is good on anything. Peaches, you know, we do, if you want like a peach cobbler or you want a blueberry cobbler, mixed berry cobbler, apple cobbler, this is one of the, this is one of the um, crumb toppings that I use on everything. And Jerry actually prefers the crumb toppings on things versus um, the actual like pies in the crust anymore. So quick, easy way to do it. So pour in a little bit of the apple juice. Just gives that more of the apple flavor. But like I said, if you don't have it, don't go out and buy a whole thing of apple juice. Use water. And I may not need all of it. Sometimes it just depends on the flour and the, the how everything just soaks up. So you don't want it where it's mushy, like almost like, um, like you've wet your cereal or something too much. You want it where it's definitely a crumb type of a topping. So I think I've got enough. So I'll just add that into... You could also add, if you wanted to, walnuts. You could add um, like any type of different nuts into this and give it a completely different flavor, which is really good. Okay. 
So this is what the crumb topping looks like. So you just want it enough where you can actually kind of put it into a ball so you can form it because when you put it on top of the apples, you don't want it to where it's it's so much where it's like flaking stuff that you can't, you know, crumbly that you can't put it on top and it doesn't stick. So this is actually a really good mixture right there. And that was probably half of the apple juice. Okay, that's the side. We'll use that for a little bit later. All right, so the mushrooms going. Curl onions. And as I was saying, so I remember how much I, um, I only put a little bit of vegetable broth. If you're looking, like look at all the moisture at the bottom of that pan, that's just from your mushrooms. So you want to make sure that you know you cook as much of that as you can off. Let that go for a little bit longer. And then we can get the apples going. So I want to make sure I get those in the oven. So these are organic honey crisp. The honey crisp right now are really good, but there's like pink galas. Um, is it pink galas or lady cake? Pink lady, I don't know. I can't remember all the names of them, but anything that's like, you know, really good right now, these are all those apples and stuff are really good. So I just did, you know, the little small ones. You could actually make this with, you know, the big tall apples and make them really big, but up to you. So if you're following along on this, so what you're going to do is we're going to, so you're going to, um, so blah, 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 let's see. Okay, cut the tops of the remaining apples off. So cut the top off. If it doesn't, like if it doesn't want to sit flat, you can always just do a little bit of shaving on the bottom because you want it to sit flat when you're baking it. But this one works pretty well. You can keep this too, because that's some of the stuff that you can cut up and put inside your apples. So definitely don't throw it away. I'll put this off to the side since I already have that already cut up. Definitely smell the mushrooms. All right, mushrooms are looking good. So I am going to go ahead and put these off to the side, put them in this here. Give me a little bit of a mushroom facial there. All right. Gotta keep everything going here. So, okay, so we've got this. We're gonna add some more vegetable broth. Like you said, you can cut it with water if you want. You can, don't worry about it if you don't have vegetable broth. It's in there. Then we're gonna add the rest of the vegetables. So we're gonna add carrots. So just chopped up, you know, little pieces of carrots, just diced. Add a medium dice, but you could do, you know, if you don't want the bigger chunks, you could do the smaller dices. And then you've got, so follow along, you've got the onions. So a little bit more onions, so just regular. You could use yellow onions, red onions, yellow onions, I mean, white onions, and I did white because that's what I had in the fridge. Get that going. All right, and then we've got, just follow along, we got thyme. So fresh thyme if you've got it, um, which is funny, fresh thyme if you got it. Or you can just use the, the dried. So I've got the dried. Smells good. Smells always smells good. Time always reminds me of the holidays. Smells really good. All right. And then salt and pepper. Jerry's not a salt fan, so I'm just gonna add pepper. You can always add salt afterwards. All right, and then we've got everything in here. We've got the onions, we've got the carrots, we've got everything else, and we'll start cooking those up. All right, apples. So you've got this. So what you want to do is you want to grab a spoon and you're going to want to hollow out the core that's in the apple. So just kind of start just kind of in a round circle. Be careful because the spoon will split. Sometimes it'll take a big chunk out, but you can always just like push it back up 
and then put all the, the crumble on it. So I'm just gonna grab a little bit. If you, you know, if you're really good with a um, knife, knife work, you could do that too. Just stick your knife in there and start carving it out. You, what you wanna do is you wanna make sure you get the actual pour outs, so all the hard parts, and then you wanna have enough room where you can stuff things in there, but have enough room on the side too where it doesn't fall apart. Once you get it started, then it gets it gets a lot easier towards the bottom. Looks pretty good. Oops, I just cracked it there, but you won't be able to tell. Sometimes it is easier to grab, just depending on your apple. And if it's really like really tough or something, sometimes it might be easier to grab a knife to, to do that. But be careful, because the last thing you want to do is stab through it and your hands at the bottom. On the core parts that are like, if it's more apple than core, you can also keep that and use that as, as what you're going to be um, stuffing the apple with. Two. These are really good. That's why I like the honey crisp right now. It's probably one of Jerry's favorite apples, but they're so crisp. There's nothing worse than when you bite. And I don't know if you guys are like the same way and stuff. You bite into an apple and it's mushy. Like all the red delicious and stuff, especially in Colorado. And I don't know anywhere else, but Colorado, they're mushy. They're, they're terrible. One more. Mm -hmm. All right, four apples, all nice and poured out. That. This in the trash real quick. Looking good. So we got carrots and onions. You see that? Not too exciting. But cook it up. The, the smaller the dice that you would do on your on your carrots and onions, the faster. Really? So if you're looking for something really quick to you know to get it going for dinner and stuff, I would do a really a really small dice on it. To me, nothing better than smelling um, onions. Love it. it. Smells so good when they're cooking out. All right, so I'm going to grab so basically a baking sheet mark um, lined with parchment paper. So if you had a really big family, you could do a whole bunch of these. So you could have like a whole tray of them. Um, but it's really nice because as long as they have the flat edges, then they set really well on there and you don't have them tipping over. So these turned out really well. So what you want to do is when you're sauteing your carrots and your onions, you just want to make sure you get to the point where your onions are your onions are starting to be translucent, and then you've got your carrots and stuff that are um, getting soft. And one way, you know, the fun way to always check them the carrots too is to take a bite. They're still definitely al dente, but warm. All right, so we've got that going in there. So then we're gonna, so we've got the onions in, so now we're gonna add the garlic. So one thing about the garlic that you always need to remember, um, and it's always a good tip and stuff is, be careful, there's, unless you like the burnt garlic taste, and a lot of times and stuff like, like Jerry and I order pizzas, we'll go, if we go to a pizza place and we order it without cheese, and we'll say just a little bit of garlic, a lot of times you'll get this like real bitterness in it, 
and that's your garlic. That means your garlic's been burnt. And so you wanna be careful with making sure that you saute your garlic in, but not burn it. Because ever if you ever taste something, you're like, ooh, man, there's a bitter taste, it's your garlic. Oh, that smells good. Okay, he's out of the way. So now comes the, as your mom always used to do when she was making gravy, scraping the bits, any of the, the, um, the bits and stuff that have, that have actually stuck to the bottom of the pan, and then that's into the pan. So we have red wine. So any red wine that you like, whatever's your favorite. Jerry's like, oh, that's my red wine that I, I sometimes have with pizza or something, but too bad. You'll get to eat it with mushroom bourguignon. Mm -hmm. mm. It's already just even before we put everything in there. How pretty just with the red wine color. Yeah, gorgeous. So if you've got any any of the bits on the bottom, you want to make sure that you scrape them off because that's the good part that you want to make sure you have in your mushroom bourguignon. That will heat up here in just a second. My knife back. All right, so we got the so we're gonna reduce the wine. So we want to make sure that's all set. So we'll just let that kind of set and, and saute a little bit. Then we're gonna get the pan ready to start making the interior of our apple crumb, crisp baked apples. All right, so we've got the we've peeled and chopped the two apples. So I just took two regular apples because it was a pack of six, I think apples or no seven. There were seven of them there. So I just took them and I peeled them off. And then I just put little chunks together. You can make the chunks as big as you want or as small as you want. But since these are smaller apples, I actually did smaller chunks. So that way when they when they cook down, I can fit quite a few of them in there. Because there's nothing better than this part of the apple. Yum. All right, so, so we're gonna add the chopped apples. And all I did when I was getting ready and stuff, I just, you know, so if you're if you want to chop them up early and kind of get that, you know, like a lot of the cutting process or the chopping process is done early, you can just take your apples. And what you can do is, is um, just add a little bit of like lemon juice on them and then just, you know, toss them up and stuff. And these have, these were chopped about three hours ago. So as you can tell that they're nice, that nice and uh, they still have just a little bit of browning on some, but they still look really good. Otherwise they'd be really brown, which is not good. All right, then, so we've got the chopped apples. We're gonna have the brown sugar, same thing. You could use monk fruit, you could use um, date paste, you could use whatever your favorite type of sweeteners are. It's holiday, so it's a little bit, little bit, a uh, little bit more sugar than we usually do. And then we've got cinnamon. Smells wonderful. And apple juice. So if I need extra apple juice, I'll use what I have that I left over and stuff from the crumb topping. like a facial. Okay, so there's everything mixed in together. You could add, like I said, you could add some nutmeg, you could add some of your other favorite spices that you like, that you usually like with apple pies. Um, you could actually add in raisins, which would be another thing. You could add in walnuts. So there's all kinds of different things that you could add into this to, to make it your own recipe. You could even add, like if you wanted to, like blueberries, which would be, so like an apple blueberry would be really good. But Jerry would be like, you're stealing all my blueberries. So just mix that up and then I'm gonna put it on the back burner while this is kind of going here. So kind of watch it when you're when you're cooking it because you've got all that sugar and then you've got the apple juice. So it's a lot of sugar that's, that's in there. So it's gonna probably bubble up pretty quick and it's gonna get like really thick and it can burn quickly. So if it starts getting really thick and you don't wanna add any more apple juice, just add a little bit of water. And that way it'll keep it where it's, it's uh, doing a nice job with it and making it all nice and, and um, like, I guess, caramelized and stuff, but without burning it. So make sure when you put wine or any type of liquor in dishes, make sure you really take the time to let it, to let it simmer out 
Um, because if you don't and stuff, you'll actually like, when, if I did this really quick and I just added everything and then served it, you would taste that, that it'd be just like that, but wine taste and it'll taste just like any type of liquor. And it's not, it's not a good thing. So you definitely want to make sure that it, it blends into whatever you're making. So take the time to, you know, the few minutes and stuff to let it burn down to half. And then it'll give you that nice rich flavor without just tasting like you're taking a big drink of white or red wine. There we go. Okay. So it's burned down. It's actually simmered down to half. So you can see it's nice and covered. There's not much of the red wine that's left, which is exactly what you want because I had a cup of that red wine in there. So it's probably about a quarter cup maybe left, but it's all in the vegetables, which is really good. All right, so then, so we've got that. We've got the wine in there. So stir in the tomato paste. So good old tomato paste. Sure, get all that out of there. Tomato paste, whenever, because you know you get those little six ounce cans, and it seems like that almost all your recipes only use a piece, you know, like a maybe two tablespoons or something. Just put it into a little baggie and put it in the freezer. Mark it, mark what your baggie is, and then put it in the freezer. So then when you get ready to make like a, a stew or you're making some kind of a pasta dish, you've got the tomato paste that you can just pull back out and put it in your sauces. I do that all the time. I do like a, a pureed pumpkin. There's all kinds of different things that. Uh, that I'll put in the, the freezer and then just pull out when I need them. Okay, so tomato paste just went in. So just making sure I'm falling and then we've got the broth. So right now we've got two cups of the vegetable broth. There's one. And we open up the other one. Make sure that it's starting to cook. This is a really pretty dish for like when you're doing the holidays or you've got family over. Mushroom bourguignon, especially if you add lots of different vegetables into it, um, is really good. People are always like, ooh, ah, and you can put it over rice, you can put it over. You know, like quinoa, you can put it over mashed potatoes, which is what we're going to do tonight, making sure that that's all good. My favorite, of course, would be mashed potatoes. That would be my first choice for anything. Let me show you what this looks like. I just want to make sure I get all the tomato paste all mixed up in there. What a pretty color already without hardly doing anything. Nice and rich, which is what I like. Okay, so we got everything in there. So now we're gonna add the mushrooms and the pearl onions back in. Make sure you get them all out. And it could be a, you know, a pretty dish too. It could be where you actually mix different mushrooms. Um, I know if you ever watch like a lot of the cooking shows um, on there, the, the um, what is it like the chopped and all those, a lot of times they'll add like three or four different types of mushrooms in there. And it's really a pretty dish too. So the flour, I noticed I left it out on the, um, I left it out on the, when I was reading through. So what I'll do is I'm going to let it kind of, I'm gonna let it simmer a little bit. The flour is only used to make it thick. So if you want it really, really thick, um, because you definitely don't want it watery and stuff when it goes over to potatoes or your quinoa or your rice or something. So let it simmer a little bit first and then see if you need to add the flour. So I will check it here in just a few minutes. And if we need to add the flour, I'll show you how to do that. And then if we don't, I'm still going to still show you how to do that. So let me grab a lid. Oh, I didn't show you with everything in. Yeah. So there it is with everything cooking. Yum. But like I said, add, add zucchini, add, you know, you could add some broccoli. You know, or you could just have all these other steamed vegetables that are on the side that you can put out, you know, around the mashed potatoes. Nothing better than adding all those delicious vegetables that, with this. So, all right, so I'm going to switch. Since this just needs to cook. This smells wonderful. It smells like you're baking like a whole bunch of apple pies.
We'll let that simmer just a little bit. Put that back there. If any of that the spoon anymore. So this doesn't take long to cook. You can cook it, you can actually let it simmer like the apples and stuff to make them really, really soft. So you could do it, you know, definitely it says like five to seven minutes, you know, or six to eight minutes. You could actually do this like 10, 12 minutes. So if you're just kind of sitting around and watching things and then you're cooking and you're kind of watching this, but then watching something else, just let them simmer because the, the softer they are, the more caramelized they're going to become and really sweet. And there's nothing better. And you definitely don't want to have, like right now, you can see that there's all this liquid on the bottom. So we're definitely wanting to make sure we simmer and get all the liquid, most of the liquid gone. So we're just going to kind of let it simmer for a little bit. And this is not a bad thing because it smells really good. There's one thing I do sometimes that if I have extra apples like this, and we've done this in, in the cooking classes when we used to do the face-to-face, -face, if we had a bunch of apples like this left over, um, maybe from a, a different uh, like class and we had some different recipe, you can actually make these apples up like this. And, you know, like I said, change whatever sugar you want, add in other like fruits and berries and things, and then put them almost like a compote, put them in a, like a little mason jar. And then when you're eating your oatmeal in the morning or, you know, maybe your favorite cereal, you can put a little dollop of this within your cereal or your oatmeal. Really good. That's almost like you have fresh, fresh type of uh, fruit going into it. This is not a bad thing, especially when apples are plentiful in the stores. And you can actually, you could dress this up a little bit too. If you like oranges, you could put some, you know, like a squeeze of like a little bit of uh, orange zest or a little bit of uh, orange juice in there too, which will completely change the flavor, but would be really good in oatmeal. That simmer. Well, and our little Christmas tree. We have another Christmas tree, but Jerry's like, get, get, get the church Christmas out. And they, he decorated me all up tonight. All right. We'll hold off on the flour. Don't need that right now. <clears throat> The other thing, if you're, you know, if you're, if you've done your apples and you're kind of waiting to do this here, you know, or you're just doing these right away, these will start browning on you. So the other thing that you can do is just put a little bit of lemon juice in there and just kind of swish it around a little bit and it'll keep it from browning. But right now you can tell these are starting to brown just a little bit, but it's not going to hurt because we're going to, we're going to put all this goodness in there. It's already starting to get pretty thick. Yum. I like fresh apple pie. Mm. Those are good. So just making sure the sauce gets a little bit thicker. No questions. Nobody has any questions. What are you guys, so what are you cooking for? And so I'll ask you a question. What are you cooking for um, holidays? Like a lot of times and stuff, I know my mom used to do a Christmas Eve dinner. Um, Jerry and I used to usually go out. Um, this year we'll probably, we'll definitely probably with the family cook something. Sometimes we've done um, tamales. We've made them all as a group and then had like Mexican, a Mex Mexican fiesta, which was really fun. We've done that. We've done all kinds of different things. I'm sure Jerry will have his preferences this year of what he, something he wants. I don't know. <laughs> so what are you guys cooking for? What are you cooking for the holidays? Dessert wise or entree wise? If you want to type it in chat? I always love to see what everybody's cooking. So as you can see, I'll show this real quick. See how thick it's starting to get? The caramelization of everything. It's almost like a caramel sauce. So it's burned off half. So just a little bit more. 
<clears throat> Nobody's typing. Oh, I just baked apples coated with chocolate flavored olive oil with walnuts, ginger, gin, cinnamon, and uh, topped with crumbled dark chocolate to melt in. That sounds good. Wow. Chocolate. Lots of chocolate. What else is anybody doing? I see one. I see more on the more on the call. Definitely macaroni and cheese. Yes. Yeah, macaroni and cheese. That's that's something we haven't made for a while here. Um, that would be something probably Jerry and I love, especially when it's like fresh and you make, you know, you can make your cheese sauces without having to do, you, know, you make it with um, like potatoes or carrots or all kinds of different ways to do it. And then you can also make one that makes really good nachos. That's a, uh, that's uh, you just put it on your nachos and you put your black beans and all your fresh vegetables. It's delicious. If you ever want the recipes, let me know. Toperky <clears throat> ham. I have never tried that, but I heard a lot of people really like that. All right. Lentil pancakes. Pancakes. Oh, Jerry. Oh, what do we got? Lentil pancakes on hand. That's always good. Lentil pancakes are really, really good. Mm. But love the mac and cheese. So Trish, send me an email. So it's Kelly, and it's at the very top or in the chat. It says it's Kelly, K-E-L-L-E-Y, at plantbasedkitchen, all one word, dot com. And I will actually send that to you. It is really, really good. Oh. What flowers can be substituted when baking? Oat, almond, quinoa, coconut, spelt? Brown rice. So you were looking for a substitute for those different those different ones, or are you just saying? Gluten-free. <clears throat> for gluten-free. So yeah, you can get, I mean, there's all kinds of, if, if that's correct, then there's all kinds of gluten-free flours out there. You've got brown rice flour, which is really good. Um, you've got, so you've got brown rice, you've got garbanzo bean, um, which is another good one. But sometimes, Sometimes I, most of the time the stuff I'll use the brown rice versus the garbanzo bean. And the reason why is sometimes when you're cooking with the garbanzo bean, it tends to leave a little bit of an aftertaste and the brown mm -hmm. rice does not. So when we're doing all kinds of things like, um, brown rice doesn't lump up. Yeah. And brown rice doesn't lump up as bad either, which is really nice. Let me just check this real quick. And I saw a question about how did you pour the apples? So I just took a spoon like this and I just, so you cut the top off. And then you just take a spoon and then just round mm -hmm. out like this and just keep carving it out. And you want to make sure you get the core and the seeds out and then you just throw the rest away. So just enough where you've got space in there. And if you have really big apples, then you're going to have a lot of space for a lot of apples. Substitute okay, for the flowers. Yes, you can for the flat flower. <laughs> I was going to say flowers. Yes, you can substitute the one for one. A lot of times Bob's Red Mill has a really, really good, if you're looking for gluten-free, um, has a really, really good gluten-free um, flour that they use. I would show you, but I have packed it up. So it's it's not something I can get a hold of unless you want me to search in the basement for a little bit. But they have a really good one. So I'm just putting in the apples. Feel free to... Grab if some of the some of the caramelizations on there. Just feel free to just put it right in the apples, and they're actually beautiful without even putting any toppings on them. And they smell. Like I said, if you have leftovers, use it in your oatmeal the next day, or make like a apple pie oatmeal. Oops, I'm not going to replace. Kind of making sure that there's a little bit of a top on there. Okay, so there's that sticky, sticky. I'm gonna put this at the back. Put this up to the front. Start showing you that. That's the only type that I need to get. Yeah, so I'll be adding some flour. So it's still, still a little bit of moisture in there, but that's what it's looking like so far. So you can see the, the pearl onions are starting to soak up some of the sauce and everything. Yum. What do you think, Jared? Looks good. He loves mushrooms. So. Okay, so then crumb topping. 
So an easy way to do it is just kind of grab it and then just put it right on top. And like I said, so you notice that it's sticky and that's a good thing because in that way it's, it sticks on top like this. And you could cover up the whole entire apple if you wanted to, so you could make it where this is even and you're only, you're only putting the topping or you can actually just let some of the apple pick out. Pick, peek, peek out. You could also vegan graham crackers. So if you crunch those, you know, mush those all up and stuff and then put it, and then put uh, some of the graham crackers in, in this and made that kind of a topping, it'd almost be like the bottom of a cheesecake topping. There we go. I'll add just a little bit more over here. Very sticky. Okay, now they are ready to go in the oven. Beautiful little apples. Here we go. 400 degree oven. Let me wash my hands real quick. I've got crumb topping everywhere. And look, there's chrome topping left over too. Yep. Recipe. What's in the yeah. topping? Yep. So in the recipe, so you've got it's all so basically there's flour, rolled oats, brown sugar, cinnamon, and some apple juice is what's in it. So definitely if you if go on if go on the meetup site and you can download the actual recipe. So we made sure all the, the recipes are up there for you. But like I said, you can substitute out, you know, different sugars, you know, for the brown sugar. All that just depends on what you're looking for. And, and if you're trying to avoid sugar, that would be something that you could use like monk fruit and still get the same nice consistency and all the, the yumminess that tastes great. You have a good scallop of scallop potato recipe. Yes, I do. Mona, send me an email and I'll send it over to you. I do have one. It's really good. And healthy. Well, healthy as it could be, but it's good. They're good. All right. All right, so we've got everything. So I've got the mushroom bourguignon. That's all ready to go. So I'm going to let it keep simmering. So one of the things, I'll go ahead and let that simmer. I'm going to bring out the mashed potatoes. So I did mashed potatoes. I just had potatoes boiling earlier, just so you didn't have to watch potatoes boil. So as you can see, I peel them. But usually a lot of times when I'm at home, I just scrub them down and I leave the peelings on them. But this time, because of especially with the mushroom bourguignon, I wanted to have that more showcased, I peeled the potatoes. That was the only reason I did that. So let me just go ahead and get the water off. Okay, so I just drained them in there. Then what you're gonna do is I've got, so I'm gonna use soy milk and then you can use salt and pepper. So I'm just gonna do pepper. You could also do garlic mashed potatoes underneath there if you want it uh, underneath the mushroom bourguignon. That would be really good too. If you do garlic mashed potatoes, it's just garlic powder and then your soy milk, almond milk, whatever flavor that you're looking for. And then you just mash them all up. So you can do it by hand. Or hand blender. So I'll just go ahead and add some soy milk. Plug. 
Oops. The uh, hand mixture just went on top of the windowsill, so now I'm gonna have to wipe that down tonight. All right. Yummy, creamy mashed potatoes, nothing better. That's all it's in them. That's all you have to put in there. Like I said, you can put salt in there if you want. You can put some garlic powder if you wanted the garlic mashed potatoes, but they are ready to go. So that easy. So I'm gonna put just a little bit of flour. So when you're using flour and you're putting it into a hot liquid, one of the things that you always wanna do, and let me grab, let's grab this that I was using. One of the things that you wanna do is you wanna grab out the hot liquid that is in the dish that you're making. I'm trying to get it without the vegetables in it. It's actually pretty good. So I'm gonna add just a little bit. So enough to mix, take your flour. And you could also do this, my mom used to do this. She used to take a, um, a mason jar and she'd put the flour and the milk and things like that in there and shake it up really well. So it's the same idea. I'm gonna grab a whisk. So like I said, I'm gonna really add a little bit of flour because it's actually thickening up really well. Mix it up. And then slowly add it back in. That way, because otherwise, if you added flour right into this hot dish, you're going to get those lumps. And then all of a sudden, you're going to see little floating, floating lumps of flour. Isn't that beautiful? Oh, nice and simmery, yummy. Okay. All right, so let's get this. You don't need the flour. All right, get some things cleaned up here. Oh my gosh, these smell so wonderful because what ends up happening is the, the caramelization, the liquid and stuff, so that was in the apples that we stuffed inside is starting to kind of leak out the apples. And it doesn't really take long because you don't want like really mushy apples but it's already starting to leak out so you can smell. It smells like it's almost like an apple pie is baking. All right. So this has actually got a really good consistency. I'll show you the liquid. So the liquid is not like it's, it's thick and it's not like it's like, you know, just white wine or, or red wine and stuff. So it's got a little bit of thickness to it, which is, it's almost like a, a gravy that's not really congealed, which is really where you want it. So. With the mushroom bourguignon, one of the things that's really nice with it is the sauce. And so when you put it over mashed potatoes, you've got this really nice sauce that goes on it. I can smell those apples. Forget this, I'll just eat the apples. Okay, we have mashed potatoes. Nice creamy mashed potatoes. Here we go. I could just do that. That's those are my favorite. Anything mashed potatoes is probably one of my favorite things. It's I grew up in Kansas pretty much my whole life, left after college. But mashed potatoes and corn, that was my that was my thing that I would eat. But these are healthy mashed potatoes. Hmm? So these are healthy mashed potatoes. Except, yes. Well the mashed potatoes we used to eat as a kid, yeah, they're not really healthy. They weren't healthy. Some of the sauce. Oh, no. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do mm -hmm. mm -hmm. 
Needs a little bit of greenery. One of Jerry's favorites, Brocco sprouts. Kansas girl here is, I didn't realize you were from Kansas. Yay. Go Kansas. We all left. Go Kansas. All right. Mushroom bourguignon over mashed potatoes. Doesn't that look wonderful? Like a hearty meal, stick it to the ribs, but healthy, completely healthy. And there's plenty of sauce in here, so you could always add, you know, if you wanted more sauce, you could definitely add that. So that is ready. Let me check the apples. And then the other thing. Have a little bit of soy ice cream. Oops, don't tip over. There we go. I'm just doing, I'm gonna do it just about another minute or two. Tell Jerry likes soy ice cream. Just a little bit left. Yeah. He likes it. What do you do with blueberries? Like frozen blueberries, <clears throat> but of course they're thawed, but an oatmeal. An oatmeal? Yeah. Top. A little bit of that. Maybe that's about it for that. You could do too, is you could actually put this like in a bowl and mix in your, your apples into the ice cream and serve it that way too. You know, like when you used to go to those ice cream stores and they mix everything together in front of you, you could do that same thing and then freeze it back up. My dad was a J, yeah, my dad was, dad was KU Jayhawks. Yay, we have this foot locker with me. Ah, oh, nice. That is so nice. Yeah, there's a KU Jayhawk. Definitely, definitely loved it. It's it's not saying I went to the the all the sports and stuff, but um, Danny Manning, all those, everybody that went there. Email some pictures, please do. So Kelly, so K-E-L-L-E-Y at plantbasedkitchen.com. And it should be in there in the chat, but definitely send me uh, pictures. I'd love to see some of the, especially said from the early sixties, would love to see what that looked like. I, it is probably, KU is probably, you think, you know, Kansas, you're like, mm, probably very uh, non, non, I guess, non-progressive, non, just kind of like a little school. It is amazing school. It was one of those ones that you, like everything was there. Like anything and everything, there had clubs there and everything, and it was it was a very fun school to go to. My degree was interior design and architecture, no. which is not what I'm doing now. <laughs> Baked apples, yum! So I'm going to pick the best one. I think I like this one. It's gonna be my hands because I have a feeling that some of the some of the caramelization and stuff will probably ah, we'll do this one. And what's really pretty with that too. Little bit of your favorite cinnamon or powdered sugar. You could do either one. But Jerry's like, nope, cinnamon. No powdered sugar. So I think I have a little, I used to have a pretty little spoon, but I don't see it. So I will just have a button. Make sure that. All right. So there is your baked apple which is wonderful and look at it just with the you know if you actually took like a doily and put this the cinnamon through it you would have all this little design on here which is really pretty but that to me i would eat that in a heartbeat and get my finger out of there mushroom bourguignon so there you go there is dinner in an hour i hope you guys enjoy 
and please send me pictures, send me emails, send me, you know, anything that you're looking for. If you're looking for any recipes, um, like the scalloped potatoes or anything like that, happy to share everything I've got. Um, and some of them I probably even have videos on. So happy to give you guys. Yeah, go to your web, like. website, there's recipes. Yep. My website, there's recipes. Yep. So yeah, def, um, the cookbook. How did I get into plant-based cooking? So I, I would say probably Jerry's, a little bit of Jerry's story, um, probably what, how many years ago? Six, 14. 14 years ago, Jerry had some heart issues. And so one of the things that he was looking at was being plant-based. And so one of the things that we you know, decided to, I was like, okay, we need to do it together. And that was the, that was the reason that was kind of our start or kind of a kick in the seat in the pants to start being plant-based. And as far as I love to cook, I've always cooked since I was probably eight years old, my parents would leave things out. And of course it was always, you know, mashed potatoes and fried chicken and all those kind of things, but I've always been that way. And then went to school and said, okay, plant-based all the way. And I just love to share how to make things taste good without adding, you know, all kinds of different spices that makes it yucky, but also make sure it's healthy. So, I mean, <laughs> barking, she's not barking at anything, but trying to make it healthy and then just sharing as much as I can share out there. So definitely that's what it's all about. It's all about building community and making sure we all live a healthy life and we live it for our kids and whatever else is out there. So thank you for asking. I appreciate that. Barking dog. Yes, I know. Penny. She's older, so sometimes she just barks at like a light flashes or something. But that's the that's the bad thing about being home. All Thanks. right. Well, I hope you guys enjoy. Any recipes you want, please email me, Kelly at Plant Based Kitchen. And we'll see you probably in about two yep. to three weeks because yep. of the holidays. See you next year. Yep. Happy Love holidays. You guys. Happy holidays. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you so much, Kelly. You're welcome. Thank you, Bye. Kelly. Nice to see you again. Good <laughs> to see you too. Valerie. Yeah. <laughs> Miss you. I missed you guys too. I'm, I'm, I I got I missed the mushroom part, but at least I got I got to hear some of what you were doing. <laughs> Perfect. Okay. Good. Yeah. If you have any questions, just email me. Thank you. You're welcome. See ya. Bye bye.